Hello there. How are you doing? I am super, super excited to be in front of your screen today. And I'm sure you're also excited to see me, right? Yes, it's the Madly Show. My name is Stitchy, and as always, I will be your guide for the next one hour if you promise to stick around. Of course, we're going to have lots and lots of fun. So today, we're going to be talking about your health yes we're going to be talking about your health so what's the topic for today we're talking fasting and healthy living yes so this period is the lent period so of course christians are fasting and the muslims are fasting also so how do you stay healthy while you're fasting what's the right thing to eat what's the right thing to do some people um eat a lot after fasting and then they just jump into all the food and then you're wondering why did you you know take all that time out not to eat and some others don't even eat at all so we want to know the do's and the don'ts when you're fasting as it pertains to your health and of course we all have um, other features that will be throwing more light into what we're talking about today along with some professionals who are going to be in the studio with me to talk about this are you ready are you ready i'm sure you're ready so where do we start today let's kick start the show with um a feature or more like a spoken word and this one is titled i am ramadan watch this and we will be right back Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. I am Ramadan, the month Muslims are at their best, fasting, praying and offering alms. I am special and only come once in a year. From dawn to dusk, Muslims fast and pray, praising Allah through the day, night spent in prayers and reflections, a continuous training that strengthens our Iman. I am Ramadan. I am the month of mercy, blessing, and worship, a time where every good deed is multiplied by over 70. I am that period where the Quran, the holy book, was revealed to our beloved prophet. In me lies the night of majesty, Lailat Qadri, a sacred night witnessed on one of the odd days during the last 10 days. A great night, better than a thousand months. All prayers are accepted to those who witnessed it. The mercy is everywhere. No one can deny it. Double up your good deeds. I am Ramadan. Wealthy Muslims reminded to give out 2.5% of their possession as zakat when it reaches the determined threshold. Zakat of Fitri is also required from every able Muslim to enable unable Muslims to celebrate Eid al Fitri. It becomes mandatory a couple days before the Eid, giving out just for the sake of the Almighty. I am Ramadan, the month of Ibadah, about to leave. But there are few days left. Those who have done good should complete it. Those who have neglected it, I say, let's end in goodness. I am Ramadan. Okay, I hope you enjoyed listening to the words of that poem titled, I am Ramadan. I mean, it's the Ramadan season. Our Muslim brothers and sisters are fasting for the next 29 or maybe 30 days. And of course, um, Lent is on. The Christians also have been fasting, building up to the Easter. And so it looks like everyone is fasting this season. So <laughs> it's very, very important that we talk about this. So I do have a guest in the studio with me. She is a dietitian who goes by the name Roseveline Uzomobia. Did I call that properly? Of course you did. Okay, welcome to the show, Roseveline. How are you hey, doing? I'm fine, thank you. Are you fine. fasting too? <laughs> I'm turning towards that. <laughs> okay, so whether it's um, Lent or Ramadan or not, 
um, we fast at different times. Sure. And we all fast for different reasons. Of course. So it doesn't necessarily have to be a religious reason. We sure. fast for maybe to lose weight, doctor's recommendation. I mean, I'm not the expert, so you're going to be helping us with all that details today. Yeah. So you are a dietitian. Of course. First of all, uh, let me help my audience understand what you do so they will understand why I pulled you here today okay. to come and talk to them. So let's talk about um, the um, job of a dietitian. What exactly do you do? Okay, um, a dietitian is, first of all, a medical expert. Okay. Yeah, one who has a BSc, HND in nutrition and dietetics. Okay. Who have undergone the internship. You know, there's an exam they call test of proficiencies. So that's a top C exam. Once you do that and pass, that's after the one year of training, you're certified a dietitian. And a dietitian does a whole lot of things. Okay. First of all, the dietitian is a food expert that guides an individual, make informed choices. A dietitian eats one to, you know, sensitizing the public on nutrition and health living campaigns and all of that. A dietitian is one who gives evidence-based information. Okay, it looks like what you do is a lot. Wow, yeah. I've been hearing the dietitian, <laughs> this, the dietitian, that. Yeah. I'm beginning to wish maybe I studied that, the dietetic, the aesthetics. Nutrition and dietetics. Ah, nutrition. Yeah. Oh, you said <laughs> nutrition. So mm. a lot of people have also argued that mm. a nutritionist and a dietitian do the same thing. Yeah. Some people say, oh, no, there is a difference. Is there a difference between a nutritionist and a dietitian? Because you mentioned the two of them uh, um, together in your title, yeah? Yes. A nutritionist is one who, first of all, you have the basic knowledge of nutrition, one who has a field of study in nutrition and dietetics, of course, but the difference is you have not undergone Sorry, internship. Rose, call that word for me. Nutrition and what? Dietetics. Dietetics. So you must learn the word <laughs> nutrition and dietetics. Okay, so, so go and, ahead. And the thing is, the difference in being a dietitian and a nutritionist is, is that a nutritionist is either you have a BSc, you have a PGD, you have a master's, you have a PhD, you've not undergone okay. internship yet. No problem. So now that means you're well fit. Sure. into the conversation for today. So let, <laughs> we're fasting. So you're going to be helping us because okay. sometimes um, people uh, um, people indulge in several kinds of fasting. I don't even want to talk about the compulsory um, religious fasting, which okay. we all have to do because of our faith. Yeah. But then again, we also fast for several reasons. What sure. are the s different types of fasting that people indulge in, excluding the one that the church or the mosque has told us to do? So what other kind of fasting do we in do? In fact, even the ones our religious body tell us to do are all incorporated in the same type of okay, fasting. Okay, so let's talk about... So yeah. the, the first thing to notice, what is fasting? True. Now, fasting Oh yeah, is that should have been my first question. Forgive me. So please tell them what is fasting. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, fasting is an absence of food, like okay. you're excluding yourself from consuming a meal at a particular period of time and um, with several reasons to why you do that. And there are several types of fasting. The common, as we know, is the intermittent fasting. Like yeah. The word intermittent is you're saying something that is done incessantly, start, stop, you know, something that alters your eating pattern. Yeah. Now, in intermittent fasting, we have the two major types under this because, of course, intermittent fasting is time restricted. And by saying it's time restricted, it's something that works, you know, in hours, something that you, you know, have to stretch in time intervals so we have the 16 over 8 method in that aspect you say the person is sent to be eating for 8 to 12 hours then the remaining 16 hours it's for fatting just cover right. up for the 24 hours okay, okay. then we have the overnight method where people have to fast for the same period of time but you know, tend not to eat tilting towards the next day or they overfeed like some of them do, including for the midnight. We all go to bed. We don't eat till the next day. Some people do that. They eat midnight. Right. Some people have that eating pattern, and it's a disorder because they start late. Some people start eating from 12, you know, and uh, they continue till 2 a.m. They are still eating 3 a.m. You know, that brain keeps giving them the signal because the brain is already alert, and they want to continually feast the brain. Because, you know, you said these things have... Um, have um, connection with our mood swing. Yes. Now, at that point, you are alert, and the, the energy keeps, you know, expanding itself. The judgment of, of these uh, calories are high, yeah. and in such a way, you want to. The more you are expanding, the more you are hungry. The more you are being, you know, dehydrated, and all of that comes to play. Now that's for intermittent fasting. Then we have the alternate fasting. The alternate fasting, of course, we know by the word alternating is a swap. 
I do this today and I, when I stop doing this, I go on to another. Now by alternating, you said, okay, for the time you are fasting, you tend to reduce what you are going to be consuming. Then once you stop... Wait. <laughs> <laughs> for the time you are fasting, you sure. reduce what you are consuming. Once you break the fast. Okay, uh -huh. I'm yeah. glad you added that part sure, because it sure. kind of sounded to me like yeah. when I, if I used to eat like two plates, I decided to eat half plates, I'm yeah. still fasting. No, but that is when you break the fast. Sure. Okay, fine. Please go ahead. So, and once you are not fasting, yeah. you tend to add up what you had expended while fasting. Oh, so I know a lot of people that are guilty <laughs> of that. So, I think that is even where most of our religious bodies come in. Yeah. You know, and they, you know, add it with the dry dry means no water nothing mm. so you're trying to seek the face of your creator and you're doing that and you see that so much is being lost and once that is lost once you are off fasting they you know push themselves towards eating, eating more. more so and that's for that and we have the okay. circadian fasting all right and that is a fasting that has to do with the way the body works effectively the sleep and the wake up cycle now when you you need to eat an hour before you wake up yeah you know that means uh you know when the person is to wake up for six yeah you know you have to adjust your timing maybe four or five then once you've done that you've eaten then continue your fasting for the time you want to either eight ten as yeah. you, the time interval you choose to then once you have done that your body you know absorbs the fact that it's getting ready with that fast then once you have started sleeping you tend to consume again mm. to prepare yourself so that once you are sleeping tilting to the next morning you may not even feel the, okay. the appetite to consume anything again. That's wow, a for the that's a lot. I mean, um, there are so many more of them though. There are so <laughs> many more. Wow. Yeah. I mean, in all that, all the ones you've mentioned, the very mm. few you've mentioned, I think the very popular one is intermittent fasting. Sure. And we hear that a lot when people want to lose weight, they're mm. changing their diet mm -hmm. plan, mm. and then all of a sudden you start hearing, oh, I'm intermittent fasting from mm. 8 to 12, mm. and then mm. I eat again, you yeah. take a snack, blah, blah, blah. So I want to know, what are, some of the, what are some of the major reasons why people incorporate fasting into their lifestyle? Now, again, okay. I'm taking away the religious part, because sure. that one, we've been told to, that we got, like Ramadan is on, they, nest, they more of compulsion have to fast because sure. it's part of the faith. Okay. So I'm talking about what are some of the reasons why people um, incorporate fasting into their lifestyle. And um, the truth is, I always say directly or indirectly, as individuals, you must, you will see yourself fasting. Okay. Now, fasting may come as a result of having little or no time for your m meals. Now, sometimes, some people, let me use the work factor. You wake up in the morning, you are rushing to work, and uh, you prepare your breakfast, you are preparing the children, you don't have the time. The next minute, it's work hour. You're counting the time of the breakfast, you didn't consume mm. anything, adding up to the lunch, which you may not even have time, time at to work. Eat. So by the time you add up, you see that you're having close to that 8 to 12 hours at the same time. So uh, that is, is that what fasting? Now, why I call that fasting? <laughs> that, 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 I said indirectly now. Yeah. Indirectly because we as individuals skip meals. Africans skip meals. And when we do that, we don't know that we are also fasting. Okay. That is indirectly now. Yeah. Now, directly now is the medical aspect of it where yeah, huh. some persons have been prone to do this fasting based on some medical conditions, mm -hmm. input, because except they indulge in that fast, that is where it, the, the, the slowdown functioning of the body, body will take effect. Example, most times you are told to fast to increase body metabolism. For uh -huh. some people who are, let me use the big people as, they are tended to fast. Why do they do that? Because it's people are plus size. Yes, not okay. really plus size. Some people who have this large body frame. So why would they tell them to fast? Because they want to caution and cushion. Let me use the two at the same time in English that works. <laughs> <laughs> they want to do that because they want to curtail their eating habits. Habit. Some people do not have control over that. So for the sake of that self-discipline, they say, okay, fast. But they don't keep them fasting for a long, long time. time. 
It can be one to two hours, one to four hours. To know how much this person can do without food. Some people can't do that. I mean, someone can't stay without food for one to two hours. <laughs> Some people can't do that. Oh, that's serious. Their, okay. their mouth is always moving, no matter how small. <laughs> okay, so uh, Rosemary, we're going to get back to that conversation. But okay. time now to um, go on a quick break. But with that break, we'll be bringing you a feature. We want to talk about fasting and its benefits to your health. When we come back, we'll be joined by another guest. And of course, the conversation on fasting and healthy living will continue. Stay with us. For many people, fasting is a popular diet trend that helps to lose weight and improve health conditions. According to new research in Journal Cell Metabolism 2019, alternate day fasting improves physiological and molecular markers of aging in healthy, non-obese humans. Four weeks of strict alternate day fasting ADF improved markers of general health in healthy middle-aged humans while causing a 37% calorie reduction on average. A lot of people fast because they want to lose some weight. Although it's dependent on how long the fasting is and um, the combination of foods. For one who overeats, when he or she decides to fast from eating some things or not eat in between meals, the result you get is weight loss because he or she is no longer overeating. It's also dependent if the person's activity is lesser than what he or she is eating and then you can get weight loss. But someone who still overeats, even in the course of fasting, might not get that result of weight loss. Research from the New England Journal of Medicine showed that intermittent fasting goes beyond weight loss. Instead, intermittent fasting improves glucose regulation, increases stress resistance, and suppresses inflammation. But what happens when you fast? The body burns through all the sugar in the body and ultimately transitions into burning fats for fuel. This also helps to suppress inflammation and repairs damaged cells for the benefit of the body. Though many people believe that fasting is not for everyone. Making a kind of feeding pattern a lifestyle is very, very important. Because when you wake up in the morning, remember aside from the fasting that goes on during the day, there's also a fast unintentional fast that goes on at night because after you had dinner imagine that you had dinner around seven and then let's say three four hours food has digested the next you have a lot of hours before the next morning you know it's night you're sleeping it looks as if it's not existing 12 hours during the day 12 hours at night so if you check it you're sleeping like about for about eight hours it's also like nothing is in the tummy and you are breaking your fast in the morning called breakfast it is important to be clear on why you are fasting and consult a health practitioner before starting a diet. Okay, welcome back. This is still the Madly Show. My name is Tochi and we have been talking fasting and healthy living. I did tell you that we'll be joined. Of course, Rosalind is in the studio, but we are now joined by Hajia Jumai Hassan Abdul. She is the head of department dietetics and oh yeah, dietetics at Guarimpa Hospital, right? Yes, Hajia. Thank you so much for joining us today. This is the, Ram the Ramadan season, like I had earlier established, and um, a lot of people are fasting this period but I, I want us to show that um, poem again you know before you came in we had show the poem establishing that this is a Ramadan season you know um, joining even though we are already fasting it's the Lenten season but we are joining um, every one of our uh, Muslim brothers and sisters in the fasting exercise and um, I bring you this poem again it's called I am Ramadan I want you to see it um, listen to the words of the um, of the poem and then we'll continue our conversation watch this again and we'll be right back <laughs> what's going on how well how did this I am Ramadan, the month Muslims are at their best, fasting, praying and offering alms. I am special and only come once in a year, from dawn to dusk, 
Muslims fast and pray, praising Allah through the day, nights spent in prayers and reflections, a continuous training that strengthens our Iman. I am Ramadan. I am the month of mercy, blessing and worship, a time where every good deed is multiplied by over 70. I am that period where the Quran, the holy book, was revealed to our beloved prophet. In me lies the night of majesty, Lailat Qadri, a sacred night witnessed on one of the odd days during the last 10 days, a great night, better than a thousand months. All prayers are accepted to those who witnessed it. The mercy is everywhere. No one can deny it. Double up your good deeds. I am Ramadan. Wealthy Muslims reminded to give out 2.5% of their possession as zakat when it reaches the determined threshold. Zakat of Fitri is also required from every able Muslim to enable unable Muslims to celebrate Eid al Fitri. It becomes mandatory a couple days before the Eid, giving out just for the sake of the Almighty. I am Ramadan, the month of Ibadah, about to leave. But there are few days left. Those who have done good should complete it. Those who have neglected it, I say, let's end in goodness. I am Ramadan. Okay, that's the spoken word, I am Ramadan. And of course, we're talking um, fasting and healthy living. And I have uh, two dietitians in the studio, Rose Valin and Hajja Jume. So Hajja Jume, I played that again because of you specifically, because you were not here when we took it the first time. Mm -hmm. So hearing the words of that poem, how does it make you feel in a season like this? Let me start with that. Well, I'm so happy when I had the jingle. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it's nice having that one and uh, at least I know this is the season and uh, this is what we're practicing now. Um, you know, as my other colleague have just said, she, I think she defined what fasting is. Mm. And uh, well, this is uh, the 30 days or 29 days fasting that the Muslims are doing uh, to abstain from eating, drinking and other marital affairs in the yeah. daytime. Uh -huh. And um, it's not everything that we eat. We try to live uh, to eat in a healthy way. Uh, it's just a kind of changing of lifestyle for us to be healthy. Um, uh, normally we eat uh, at dawn and at sunset. Yeah. And um, so when we come to eat, you know, in most cases people doesn't even know what to eat. They True. eat every sort of junk. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. I want to eat more, more. I have to eat rice. I have to this, this, and that. It's too much. So we need to eat little because the calorie you need at that breaking time of fasting is just little. You need little calorie and, and you need to hydrate yourself because definitely you are going for prayers. Yeah. So that prayers, you know, is enough for you to have. It's an exercise. Yeah. So you don't overfeed yourself. So you take a little going for the prayers then when you come back you come and rehydrate you hydrate yourself again okay. so you use locally available foods you don't have to go for expensive thing because things with the economy of the country so you go for locally available food we have um like tamarind we have like hibiscus yeah. juice we have like cucumber that's what we call zobo. zobo okay yes yeah <laughs> yeah we have like bao bao okay Uka. yeah uh-huh we have like um cucumber and uh, watermelon these are all hydrating soft uh, foods okay i'm glad you mentioned that because i was going to ask you what is the best kind of thing kind of food to eat the moment you break your fast i'm going to let you speak on that a little mm -hmm. bit Rosa, because sometimes when people just finish fasting the next thing is they may not even drink water because you talked about hydrating yourself they may not even take water first the next thing is they are eating a, a bar they are eating mm -hmm. swallow they're eating rice and they're eating everything all at the same time mm -hmm. so Rosa, look, she mentioned quite a few mm -hmm. but i want you to talk to us about the best kind of thing to eat the moment you break your fast and why now when 
Because well, we are speaking to your health now. Sure. Yeah, so sure. let's talk about Now, that. when you are fasting, it's, it's said to be a time, a process in the body system. And at that moment, the best way to lubricate your system that has gone through a process is with water first. Because some people tend sometimes to break with most of our citrus juice and when citrus oh. fruit sorry and when they break with citrus fruit they call those citrus fruits enemies how you break with your oranges and the next minute you're saying oh when i break with oranges i start having this uh, stomach sensation i'm having pains in my stomach and uh, the oranges are not good it's not a good meal because it's acidic in nature one thing the person forgets to note is that it's already acidic nature that we know, but the body has bio juices that help us to stabilize these uh, acidic food to alkaline in nature. So I shouldn't so, take fruit orange. So in other words, that. start with water first because wow. water is a powerful vehicle. Now, what does the water do? Water will aid you, aside from lubricating our muscles. You know, it's like a refresher. It it gives you the strength. It pushes down whatever remaining nutrients that the body has stored. Mm and gets you prepared for whatever meal you should consume. And you don't start eating heavy. Because right. once they do that, they end up breaking down the system at the same time. And that is why for someone who has fasted and is looking for one big bowl of swallow and soup, you tend up being a redundant person at that point. Right. So what the water does is that it has filled you up. Mm. And once you've taken water, water reduces the amount of food you should let in. Mm. So in other words, even if you finish taking water and your body yearns for you want to take pap and moi moi or you want to take masa and you know a little of tea, that's good. It's fine. Somebody will say, ah, why didn't you go for, why didn't you say, no, 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 you're not supposed to do that. After all, you have lost. You've done a lot of magic with your water. Right. Oh, okay. So all that right. when you take your fruit, it becomes an accompanying meal. Right. Okay, so I, I'm glad you mentioned that because someone like me, I, I think I'm guilty. Sometimes <laughs> when I'm breaking my fast, the first thing I'm looking for is maybe orange, I'm uh, looking for fruit. Yes. So now I know that I have to take water first yes. before I take anything. Yes. Anyway, um, do remember that you can send us your messages to 0811-778-2020. Send your messages to tell us your thoughts on our conversation for today. And of course, I will read it on the show if you send it. The number is on the screen to send us your messages. I will read on the on the show. So, Haji, I'm going to come to you next. Okay. So, I believe that as much as we've all mentioned, we've mentioned how good fasting mm. is to the body. Sure. I also believe that it may have its own side effects or it will have some potential risks yeah. to our body as well. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe doing it too much or, like I said earlier, not doing it enough. Mm. So, I want us to talk about some of the potential risks that fasting holds, has on our body, maybe particularly on uh, some people, maybe who have health issues, uh, particular age brackets, and all of that. Let's talk about that. Well, let me, uh, as I mentioned, mm -hmm. uh, some people tend to be malnourished. That, that was what I said earlier. Yeah, because yeah you mentioned Because that. when you fasted and you fasted, you exceeded, you've exceeded the, the hours or the, the color you have to mm. take for the day, and you've not taken it, you understand? You, your, your body tends to lose a lot of energy, the calories is gone, and what will you, the next, the, uh, you are still you are fasting, so at least you will be more nourished. So and some people that have metabolic problems, like diabetic pro cases, hypertensive, uh, you know, um, cardiac failure, people with renal diseases, you understand. When they tend to fast, they should know the exact food they are supposed to take, that is it. I believe fasting is very good. It's very, it's very healthy. So yeah. Even uh, people that have metabolic uh, issues, yeah. issues yeah, yeah. But the only thing they should know what they are supposed to eat. That is the main thing. And as she said, water is very vital. She's the one is supposed to break the fast with water. Not cold water, please. Yeah. Let yes. it not be cold water. Right. Let it be warm Ooh, water. Not water. cold water. Yeah, yeah. Oh my no, God. No, no. It I'm has guilty to be warm. of everything. All right. It <laughs> has to be, you know, like us, Islamically, when you are breaking your fast, you use either warm water and dates. Hmm. You, know, you know why this date? It's, um, it has so potassium. It has magnesium. When you are fasting, you are, lo you are losing a, a lot of electrolyte balance. Mm. The water is being lost. So by the time you t take, um, you, you, you consume dead, you are replacing your magnesium and potassium in the system. Okay. Then now you are taking water. Then the water has to be warm. 
So when you take water, the stomach is already full. The little you, uh, uh, the little you take, you now take s a small amount of food. So mm. You don't have to consume a lot of food. Now, maybe if you are taking it, you divide this fl the plate into four parts. Half of the plate would be vegetable. Part quarter would be maybe protein yeah. or, uh, and the quarter would be calorie. So by taking water at first, so you might take little food, you might consume little food. So there will be no way you will know you have any problem by eating whatever you ha is being served to you. Okay. Um, I like that you mentioned that because I want to ask, you know, um, fasting, I feel like fasting has some misconceptions and also sure. some myths that are surrounding it that may not be true. So everybody, you know, when we started talking, you mentioned intermittent fasting. I told you mm -hmm. I hear it a lot when people mm -hmm. want to lose weight mm -hmm. and, oh, you need to do intermittent fasting. So I want to know mm -hmm. if this is a myth, let's bust it today. If okay. it is true, let's establish that it's true. Okay. So can fasting be an effective strategy for weight loss? Yes. 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 Because I've read before, I can't remember, I, oh, I, I, I read somewhere online, uh, someone called Dr. Zane. Uh, okay. I don't know how popular he is. Mm. So I want to know. He said that fasting is not really an effective way to lose weight, but there is a lot of myth surrounding it that. Like so, so I want to know. Does fasting? So you've been nodding since. Oh yeah, talk to me, Rose. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, <laughs> can it be a very effective strategy to lose now? Weight? You know, one thing about we uh, um, dietitians is there are so many approaches to achieving it, and especially when it comes to weight management. And then um, when they have used the aspect of the dietary approaches and it doesn't work out, they tend to go towards the lifestyle approach. It doesn't work out. The next option that it comes if these two have failed of which we know these two can never fail now they bring in fasting so it's an approach over one over four in the sense that one over four right yes uh, hey, it it's not completely work. now why would i say so because if you should put forward fasting people would say okay since fasting is the approach let all Let's of us fast. fast and you end up seeing that Maintaining the weight that has been lost becomes an issue because Nigerians, we are good at knowing how to lose weight. But well, how to maintain is a challenge. And that is where they now tilt back towards the guessing. dietitians <laughs> and now say, okay, dietitian is true. I lost weight through fasting. It's not just fruit fasting. I took a lot of food. Yeah, because now they forget the that keto diet thing was very popular. Yes, but they forget that some of these diets are designed for a particular thing like the keto diet is designed for a particular thing for a particular ailment it's right. not designed for the normal you know dietary approach no it's oh, not wow. just the same way now people now brought in this food fasting these mm. are all things people design on their own to make achievable but when it comes to the medical approach used by the dietitian it mm. is not that's why we tell you these are not sustainable approaches if and dietary management does not work out, lifestyle management does not work out, we now say, okay, let's use option three. That's why I said one, fasting. which is fasting. But it comes sparingly. You will not see somebody bringing forward go and fast. So that <laughs> they will not put I you on the line. I believe you, because if, if it was that easy, I've been, I've been a size 12 for God knows how long. I've been trying to get to size 8. I have fasted in this life. <laughs> <laughs> and it, it hasn't worked. I mean, yeah. I have I have tried. My, you know, you mentioned earlier at the beginning of the show when you're fasting unconsciously, yes. like you don't plan. Sometimes you get into work, you haven't had breakfast, yeah. you're busy, and you find out that it's two th two p.m., three p.m. Yes. Sometimes four five p.m. You mm -hmm. haven't even mm -hmm. eaten. Mm -hmm. sure. You haven't even had water. True. That is fasting, True. even though you didn't plan it. True. But then again, I've been expecting to get to size eight. I'm seeing <laughs> So, yes, I'm glad you cleared that sure. because it feels like maybe it works for some people mm. because our bodies are different. Sure. But maybe it did sure didn't work for me. So let's talk about um, how, what are the best nutritional, is, is the word nutritional, what the best, the Dietary best way to, average. yes, to losing weight since fasting is seeming not to work. So let me be using style to get help. So, <laughs> all right. So let's talk about that, Haja. Oh, I, as I said earlier, you, it's just it's change of lifestyle. Yeah. Lifestyle, the quantification of food you eat, the timing. You understand? Timing. The timing is very very oh important God. because some people eat late, and by the time you eat, when it is seven, eight, and go back to and go to bed, mm. what do you expect? 
so it's not really good for you. So any to eat late. Yes, it's not very good. This and it's not good to skip thin. breakfast. Breakfast is the best meal of the day of the day. But if you are fasting, you know sometimes when you break the fast, some people tend to eat a lot more than is expected. Okay. So that's another issue. So w at when you come to breakfast fast, you should know the quantity you are eating. It, everything has to be in moderation. And after taking the water, I said the, qual the calorie in the plate has to be a quarter. The protein has to be a quarter. While the t t t uh, half of the plate should be vegetable. That's how it's supposed to be. That is for you to maintain a healthy lifestyle. Yeah. Wow. You know, it's, it's, uh, it's funny you mentioned this timing thing. Because honestly, I feel like my body does not have clock. My body does not know the time. It doesn't know if I'm eating at 12 midnight. I'm the one who knows. I mean, it's in my mind. It doesn't know the time. So what if some people, they're on midnight. Because why is midnight here? And I'm not eat and I'm trying not to eat because I shouldn't eat at night. It's probably noon somewhere else, and someone else is eating. So my point is, our body doesn't know time. Time is what I tell me. If I tell my mind it is two p.m. or I tell my mind it's five p.m., then I'm now conscious of that time. So does it really have to do with time, or it has to do with the fact that the moment you eat, you go to bed? Because I could eat at two p.m. and go straight to lie down. That could be night time. I could sleep till morning, but I didn't eat at midnight. I, I hope you get what I'm yeah, trying to say. Yeah. Now, our body has been... One thing about the body, I tell a lot of people, is that our body speaks to us. And as we, when we train our body, we give it the language it should use in interacting with us. Same way as the time. Now, if you should train yourself that I wake up in the morning and I start consuming my breakfast at nine. Mm. The body tilts towards that nine. Whatever you do, right. the brain does not give you the signal at that moment that you are hungry. And that is why whatever we do, we should be careful what signals via our brain down the body. Because the brain will tell you, keep walking. Don't stop. Mm. And once it gets towards that, you know, tilting towards nine, you yeah. start seeing a little fatigue. You start having this breakdown. Your tissues beginning to wear out. Mm -hmm. You know, you're beginning to feel that stiffness somewhere. Some people, you see that the muscle contrasts. You can't move. Yeah, because I was going to ask how fast you see that you become. Energy levels. You see that you're sweating more than ever. These are signals that the body begins to tell you it is time to eat. And you look at that time. Oh, nine o'clock. Because you've already trained yourself mm -hmm. that you should be eating at nine. That is because you've already given your body a timing to eat. Yeah. Now the essence of Giving yourself that timing is when it gets to a point where digestion should take place and you embark on eating again, mm. you will see that the next meal you will consume will not be ingested into the body. It begins to have effect on you because at that moment, the body does not have enough polymers to metabolize that food. And once they are releasing themselves so fast, yeah. they give you sensations like heartburn, you start to choke. You, you know, you start to s feel parasitic movement in your stomach that some people, maybe they eat for the next minute they're visiting the white man. That is because you have not allowed, because these <laughs> things are, <laughs> these <laughs> things are like, they, they have their timing. I time like that. <laughs> so, the white man. <laughs> uh -huh. I want to empty, because there are some people that, if they eat now, they are empty. Yeah. They eat again, they they're are empty. empty. Mm -hmm. And they constantly do that repeatedly. And if you check those people, they eat more. Okay. They don't even eat the normal three or Five, four. four. They end up eating eight times. They don't even know. Okay. All right. So I was going to ask you who should fast and who shouldn't. But, <laughs> <laughs> but we're going to talk about that shortly. Okay. Um, and please do remember to send your messages to the number on your screen. But before I get to read your messages, let's go get some views from the street. So something very funny. A lot of us set out to fast. Not me. I'm just using us generally. We set out to fast, and then let's, let me say you want to fast is from 6 to 3 or 6 to 6 p.m. And all of a sudden at 12, you cannot help it again. You have gone to eat. You've gone to hide to eat. And then you come back to now say you're still fasting. So we went to the street to find out views from people. <laughs> we want to find out, like, um, why do they fast? And there ha has there been any time you broke your fast for any reason? These are the views that we got from the street. Watch this and we'll be right back.
Well, Allah say we should fast. And the award of fasting is from Almighty Allah. I used to fast, but I don't anymore. We fast because it's compulsory for every Muslim to fast. Yes, it's compulsory. I couldn't tell our prophets, Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, that every Muslim must fast. I fast to empower myself spiritually. Uh, like three, four days. This is 30 or 29. I fasted for 21 days. I fasted for more than that. Yeah, there is many reasons. If I seek, I will not fast. Then, during the time that I'm fasting, if sickness comes to me, I will break it. Yes, later, after fasting period, I will pay it back. While I used to fast, uh, sometimes maybe ill health or you are not in the spirit to carry on and you know it's something you don't pretend about. So instead of wasting your time, you just end it. That, there's many reasons that I can cut my fat, but if I'm healthy, I can cut, like example, if I'm traveling for, to a long journey, I can cut my fast. If I'm sick, yes, if I got accident and drop a lot of blood, I can keep my fast. The only time I cut my fasting short was when I was pregnant. And why I cut the fasting short was because the Holy Spirit ministered to me that I should cut the fasting by two. That was how I now stopped the fasting. A lot of people seem to be mentioning health, health reasons. I could tell you some re reasons why some people broke their fast or cut their fast short before the time. But if you say it's health, no problem. I believe you. I agree with you. Anyway, welcome. You're still watching The Madly Show. And of course, we've been talking fasting and healthy living. I still have Rose Verlin and Hajia Jumai in the studio. They're both dietitians and they've been helping us throw more light on our conversation for today. So before we went on that break, and of course, remember that i want to read your messages on the show so send your messages to 0811 782020 the number is on the screen send send the message here yeah? i want to read it i want to get your views and opinions on our conversation for today so before we went on that break i was asking you who should fast and who shouldn't fast because everybody just gets into the fast especially when it's a spiritual um exercise we all just get into into it but it may not be good for some people yeah, so I want to know who should fast and who shouldn't and why. You want to go, Hadja? All right. Well, um, as you said, spiritually, it's good for, it's fine for everybody to yeah. fast, except if you cannot, on the way, you can stop your fast. Especially people that have um, GIT problems, like um, gastric ulcer, duodenal, all GIT problems. Sometimes, you know, you know, when you fast, the stomach is empty, then there when is what? When you say GIG, what does that mean? Gastrointestinal tract. Right. Yeah. So when you fast, there is this sometimes when you don't, there is no food in the stomach, then you know there is as, uh, accumulation of acid in mm -hmm. the stomach, whereby it will, ca it will cause irritation yeah. in the system. So for those people that have GIT problems, I, in most cases, they don't fast. They, or they fast when they, always, only when they can. Okay. Uh -huh. But for any other person that is fit, I believe um, spiritually is good and health-wise is good to fast. Because um, the, the, the duration, if you look at it, is like the Islamically, it's um, from five, 5 to 6 p.m. I think it's 5 to 6 p.m. So it's almost like 11 hours or so. So the, the, the duration is not much. And uh, yeah. Sorry, Hadja, did you say the duration is not much? Yeah, it's not. Oh, wow. It's okay. not. Okay. Yeah. Do you agree that it's not much? It's not much. How will you say it's, it's not, not much? much? It's not much. It's not much. <laughs> because, because you know. for 11 hours you know, without eating. Hadja, please. Let now. me tell you. Let me tell you. You know, because this thing you are doing is spiritual. You are feeling it. You are full already. Okay, when you add spiritual. To yes, it, yes, you are full. Okay. yes, you are full. Yes, you are full. You are full. And you know. Inside you, health-wise, you are fit. You're okay. I, you, you wake up, you go to work, <coughs> you do ward rounds, yeah. you do consultation in the clinic, then you go out for meetings, you come to the studio, you go back home and enter the kitchen. So I feel it's something to, you know, one is it makes you fit, health-wise. Yeah. Because if you Some don't people, do... their energy level are uh, down more when they are fasting. Well... 
you know, sometimes when you are not happy. If you say that when we are fasting, we should be supporting ourselves with, uh, it's, uh, I'm doing it unto God, I'm doing it unto God. Okay, yes, I agree. But if you're talking about health-wise or physically. But if, but if you're working, you have to go to work. You yeah, have to you go have to, to work. If you have patient, you have to see the patient. You have operation, you have to be in the theater to do that. Okay. So. Okay, I agree with you. <laughs> I mean, different strokes for different modes. But, um, Rosalind, I'm going to ask you this. Like, mm -hmm. how do people ensure they're, having, they're getting ad adequate um, nutritional balance when they're fasting? How do we ensure that... Like we're balancing it out. I mean, I know you've mentioned several times that mm -hmm. you take water, you take this, you take that. But how do I ensure that in the midst of taking all these things, there's a balance? Because my body's already used to, as you mean, I'm fasting for two weeks. My body's already used to for this two, 14 days, I'm not eating for 11 hours. Mm -hmm. So how do I now ensure that whatever I'm giving to my body, I'm creating a good balance for whatever it is I'm taking in? Okay, just like I said earlier, is to note what your reason for fasting is. Now, if it's, and before then, you already have your, your lineup of, you know, eating and how you've yeah. been eating before now. So, even with the fasting, the only thing that changes there is, while fasting, something was expended. And now, you want to refill what has been expended. Mm -hmm. So, you want your energy output and input to mm -hmm. be of equal yeah. side. What do you now do? What have you been consuming before fasting? Mm. I give an instance. If your regular meal has always been, you wake up in the morning, you take flakes in the afternoon, rice and beans, and you know that you started your fasting in the morning yeah. and you ended it you know, within the noon time, you are looking out for the supper. Now what do you do? You don't add up what you lost from your breakfast and your lunch to, to eat the a supper. dinner. Mm -hmm. Now, how do you right. do? Because, because why we call it supper, we don't call it dinner. We call it supper because if you call it dinner, that means you're expecting more to be added to the meal. But when oh, you say really? supper, mm -hmm. yes, we refer to it as supper mm -hmm. because supper is the last meal. Mm -hmm. Whatever meal that accompanies wow. that supper becomes mm -hmm. your healthy snacking. So I should stop having dinner. And so start yes, because stuff. if you say dinner, <laughs> dinner is continuous. When you use the word dinner, it right. is continuous. And when you say dinner, it mm. also auto means that you still wake up if mm. you're having that mm. feeling to eat, mm. to eat. Mm. So since you are looking out for your supper, and you know that your lunch is rice and beans, yeah. now fine, you can take your rice and beans mm. at that moment for your supper. But of course you will be hungry after mm -hmm. that because. You have l expended so much. That is where you go for your healthy snacking. You know, your healthy snacking can may not necessarily. Some people are not good at the cucumber. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Some people are not good at the vegetables. Mm -hmm. Now you can you substitute it for if you like masa. You can take your masa with your vegetables. That has covered up for if you're not good at taking your nuts, if you're not good at taking your fruits, if you're not good at because some people like it when it comes. You know these vegetables. Some people like it as soup. Right. They don't fancy it as, come and eat garden egg. You say, okay, which one? Green one. It's already bitter. Yeah. <laughs> mm. So it's not in them. Mm. So now, let's give them this option of taking it. Or you, t you try to, you know, inculcate it like a mixture of salad. Make a rich meal rich. out of it. Yeah, okay. You have your cucumber. You can add your carrots. You can add, you know, it becomes appetizing and appealing for one to see. It becomes a salad for you. Okay. Uh, you know, or you make a fruit salad, that's yeah. fine. So that will now cover up for whatever you've expended. You now see that as you've taken that, you did not increase your plate. But you just full. you did not increase your plate. Because when you increased the plate, I eat with a s big size plate of this yeah. in there. Because I fasted, I make it two plates. Mm -hmm. You didn't increase the plate. Okay. What you just increased was the food that's a nutrient in that plate. Oh, fantastic. Um, I have messages coming in. Okay. But Oh, of course, today is World Dietitian Day. Yeah. World Dietitian World oh, wow. Day. Congratulations. We're Thank celebrating you, you today. Yes. So I have questions and messages coming in. But yeah. um, I'm going to first ask you, Hajia, to yeah. tell me maybe the essence of why you feel the need. Why should you guys be celebrated today? I mean, I, I'm celebrating you. Mm -hmm. I'm talking about you guys, um, or what you do today. Mm -hmm. But why? Why should we all know what a dietitian does? Well, um... I I know here. I, Go ahead. Here in Nigeria, I think the dietitians are not well recognized. 
we are not recognized. Um, when you when when patient comes to the hospital, when a doctor refer them, go and see a dietitian. They will say, what is a dietitian? Who because is a dietitian? dietitian? You understand? Before. So they will say, who is a dietitian? A dietitian is a person that now sits, talks to you, plan your meal, talks to you about your lifestyle and what and what you are supposed to eat, depending on your disease condition. In fact, you don't have to be sick for you to be a dietitian. But if you want to be healthy, you see a dietitian. Right. You understand? So today is uh, World Dietitians Day, and uh, we are celebrating it there in National Hospital. I just left National Hospital. And um, we are trying to inform or enlighten the public for them to know the importance of having dietitians in, whole, in all hospitals. Yeah. Um, you know, dietetics is... No, it's not Dietetics. about yes. It's not about medicals. It's not about drugs. You understand? Any doctor that you see, he will prescribe drugs to you. But a dietitian will now prescribe a diet to you, right? Using the locally available food that you have around you, that are good for you, you and good for you, for you to be healthy and stay healthy. That is we, the dietitian. So oh, fantastic. Yeah. Uh, see a dietitian today. I mean, we all need a dietitian, yeah. especially when you're trying to, these days, everyone is trying to eat healthy. Mm -hmm. Everyone is trying to stay healthy. Mm -hmm. Most especially make um, good food choices. Sure. So, and I believe that is why we need dietitians because mm -hmm. you help us choose the right things to eat and portion rightly. Anyway, I'm going to take a few messages. Uh, we're almost rounding up the show, but let me take a few messages. Um, this message is from... Julie. Julie says, hello everybody. My name is Julie from Abuja. I enjoyed listening to you today and I've learned a lot about fasting today. Thank you so much, Julie. Uh, Mr. Sam says, fasting is good. I'm going to try to fast more even though I don't like fasting. Okay, Mr. <laughs> Sam, they have told us how healthy fasting is. So you're going to try to fast even more. I have Clement from Karu. Clement says, um, okay, give me a minute. Yeah, Clement says, I enj I'm enjoying the show today, uh, talking about fasting. I mean, we've been fasting since building up to Easter, but I've, okay. Yeah, I've broken my fast <laughs> on a few occasions. I'm not going to tell you why. I told you that there are people who do not just break for health reasons. I mean, I had a cousin then on a gray note every time we are fasting you find out that while the rest of us are restless and uneasy we are checking the time he's just okay he's never moved and then one day it was my younger brother who caught him oh lord <laughs> while we are <laughs> while we are all tossing and turning and checking the time and then funnily enough we're fasting from just 6 to 12. he is okay go because we had like um plantation fruit plantation at the mm -hmm. backyard he would go and eat, eat. a lot of mm -hmm. fruits wash his mouth and then come back and then he's joining us to act as if ah <laughs> so there are some people who cannot hold the time of fasting so we have to um um try to do that because mm -hmm. you guys have told us or you both told us how important it is to our body mm -hmm. i have so many other messages but it's time to go ah <laughs> it's time to go. Did you learn something today? I mean, mm -hmm. I learned a lot about fasting today. Thanks to Rose Verlin and Hajia Jumai. Mm -hmm. Thank, Thank you so you much for being much. part of the show today. Thank and you Thank you much. to our viewers for being part of the show today and sending in your messages. Even though I didn't get to read everything, I do appreciate you being part of the show today. Well, it's a wrap on the show today. Thank you so much again. Thank you. And until I come your way again next week, the very, very, very interesting interesting conversation on the Madly Show. My name is Tochi. See you next time. Bye-bye.